Bobby Kotick's a cunt. We know he's a cunt. But that is going to be the opening of this podcast now. Wearing a new yeah. one shirt. <laughs> I thought I dug it out when I did a preview way back when. I've got two shirts. One's too small for me though. I'm a fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're not meant to agree with me. You said that. <laughs> yeah, you laughed, you fuckers. You said, yeah, well, well, I haven't seen you in person in two years, so who knows? Yeah, true. It so... might have gotten worse. <laughs> no, no, I'm actually slimmer. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Thanks to the yeah. gym. So, no, probably not be when I finally healed from this broken bloody foot. Christ. Anyway, topics, games, not broken foot talk. Um, We've got quite a few today. A lot of, well, a lot of little ones, same as the last time. I'm going to be ranting about Bobby Kotick. Even when he does something that is objectively good on paper, you know it's a scum move. There's something about Marvel, which, to be fair, I've heard good things about Guardians of the Galaxy, and obviously Alessio's reviewed it, so maybe, just maybe, Marvel games are finally going to be good again. We've had Spider-Man and Guardians, so, yeah. Resident Evil Village, there's something about that. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Somebody else will be taking that topic. Then we've got uh, another acquisition. We've got Ubisoft talking. Yeah. Talking about Assassin's Creed. And then we've got GTA, which is going VR, apparently. Yeah. So, shitloads of topics. Too much. Too much talking. Too much. So, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> nah. Um, I'll just start with Bobby Kotick. Bobby Kotick's a cunt. We know he's a cunt. <laughs> but that is going to be the opening of this podcast now. <laughs> Me just calling Bobby Kotick a cunt. Um... Objectively speaking, the move that's happened on paper is a good thing. So Bobby Kotick's for good, most of his salary. I think he's gone down to sixty-five thousand dollars for the year. Somebody correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah, sixty-five. Yeah. So sixty-five thousand dollars a year. This is. It's it the sounds good. Level. Yeah, um, it um, sounds good. But then people need to just remember that last year, after yeah. firing, you know, close to a good few hundred people over the past three years, we're firing two years, firing nearly 2,000 people. Well, Activision's making more money than ever before, and Bobby Kotick got over $100 million as a payment in a bonus. Him thinking, I will drop my salary to $65,000 for the year, or, well, no, until Activision's culture is mm. improved, is bullshit. We know it's bullshit. It's If someone pays me $100 million last year, I don't need to get paid for the rest of my life. <laughs> Bobby doesn't need yeah. it. He's an absolute conniving little cunt, and he knows it's just he's trying to be PR, trying to be good PR. It's not working from anybody with a brain cell. Nobody with a brain cell believes it. Bobby Kotick doesn't care about the fact that people in his company have been sexually abused, people have been assaulted, people have been discriminated against, people have been... Oh, everything. You name it, it's happened. So, 65 grand? If anything, he should be paying 65 grand to every single person who's suffered abuse in that company. And more. Yeah. I could rant more, but I think that clears it. Man's a cunt. You know, it's yeah. funny. I was I was thinking, uh, who's going to say that the company culture has been improved? He is going to decide himself that things have improved. Good point. They're, they're, yeah. Mm, it, this hasn't been clarified. So who's going to say things have improved? Yeah, it's people named by him, so I, I really, it's, it's like you said, it's just a PR move, really. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, it's a PR move, and uh, but I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe 
they will also try to actually improve things so that he can get on the normal salary uh, sooner rather than later, you know? So uh, I don't have the possibility at least, but uh, we'll see. Uh, obviously, this is a PR move. Uh, we'll see if it, uh, if it ever, you know, becomes any more than that. Uh, and uh, yeah, there were also some concerns already uh, vented by the SOC investment group. Uh, so basically, uh, they were saying that uh, these steps fall short of uh, making lasting changes. Uh, you know, these are also shareholders of the division. So uh, apparently, they called on the board of directors to step forward and take accountability. So, well, it is good that that at least some of the shareholders are taking these steps, uh, kind of nudging the company to to do the right thing uh, when it comes to all this whole mess. Yeah, it's a strange one because the shareholders, or some of the big shareholders of Activision Blizzard, have also complained in the past about Bobby Kotick's salary and bonuses um it mm. always goes through because of kotick's got large shares himself and his friends have got large shares so it always sneaks through he's still got that stranglehold so the pain in the ass but the best thing that could happen is a massive invest government investigation and a massive massive punishment for the company and well the sec Investigation is still ongoing, I think. Yeah, so. but they need a really massive punishment. One that makes it so shareholders have to sue the company for this culture, which they would they would probably win, which would eventually, yeah, it would make Bobby Kotick's p- position untenable. And he's done a lot for Activision Blizzard. He has. He's grown it from a company with absolutely nothing to what it is now, the biggest Type yeah, of Chinese company, the biggest third-party publisher in the world. Yeah, and there's no doubt he's got a good business mind. It's just that I need to think of a different word so I can use it in the title of the podcast. He's a bastard. There we go. I can use that word. <laughs> but it's a, it's annoying because the the problem this brings raises to me is also the fact that. Bobby Kotick is still ingrained in that horrible culture where he's working it based on money. Oh, well, I, I won't take any money. I won't take any money this year or until things have improved because that's the only thing that matters. No, no, Bobby. I, I think, yeah, that's the only thing that matters to you, money. But people don't care about... Well, people do care about money, but that isn't the main thing that they live for. They want a quality of life and you just say, saying, I won't get paid my hundreds of millions until things have improved. I've got a better idea. Put that money into improving the culture. Pay yeah, people actually, more. yeah. That would have made more sense. Yeah. yeah. Pay people more. Oh, give them more money themselves. It does help. Even better, just use that money to extend the life the development type of games so people aren't crunching, so people aren't working themselves to death. And also, <laughs> hire a few people that aren't accountable to you to walk around the offices and anybody who actually goes in for discrimination abuse or anything else, they can royally get their ass kicked. I will volunteer for that. You just, just pay me pay me 500 quid a week. I will gladly kick people's asses if they engage in that horrible conduct. Works Chris, the yes, speaker. I will gladly do it. I'll just get a stick and start beating them over the head with it. Big stick. Possibly a baseball bat. A few, <laughs> a few hits with that, they're not going to abuse anybody again. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. you, <laughs> you are going to abuse them. <laughs> Okay. Well, I might have used them <laughs> once they're on the floor. Not with not with my, not, not with myself. Not with myself. With the bat. Abusing the abusers. Uh, 
That sounds bad. <laughs> Probably gonna get yeah, very bad. That sounds like I'm probably going to get arrested. If I'm not on next week, yeah. that's why. So <laughs> It's Bobby's fault. Moving on from molesting people with baseball bats, let's talk about uh, let's talk about something else horrific. Or it's like horror game? Resident Evil seems to have sold well. Somebody else yeah. picked this one up. Yeah. Yeah, Francesco, they want to do it. Uh, yeah, you, you know, it doesn't surprise me because it's a very good game. And it, 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 it uh, now I'm thinking about that. Before we actually got the announcements and there were rumors of the setting, because, because things are different from previous Resident Evil. I remember people were worried that this wouldn't be true Resident Evil, but then the fans have spoken and... Uh, it's selling well. I think it helped. It, uh, it really helped a lot the fact that Resident Evil Seven was a good game, mm. and that probably helped it a lot. Resident Evil Six. I don't know if you, if any of you ever played it. It's not really a good Resident Evil game. They they tend to go in that cycle of making one or two good games and then making something shit. Yeah, but yeah, well, back when they when Capcom released Resident Evil Six, it was the Dark Ages of Capcom, where everything they put out was was not a, not that good. So I, I think Resident Evil Seven had a lot more to prove, a lot, a lot more to prove, and Resident Evil uh, Village built upon that. And yeah, it's a good game. I think it's deserved. It's a complete game for once. It, it really doesn't need DLC, in my opinion. But it's still getting it. But I don't think it really oh, needs. Guess DLC now. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Capcom said they are they are making it free. They're going to release free DLC. Okay. So it's probably going to, yeah, it's no going, going to be small. Yeah, it's going to be small stuff. I think like new difficulty settings, that that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's well deserved because it's a really good game. Well, the PC version is still a little, uh, it still has issues, and they haven't fixed it. But generally, it is okay, I suppose. Yeah. Sad reality is though, when you look at Capcom and so many, I don't understand why most Japanese companies will not make a good PC port. You know, it's weird because Devil May Cry Five was a very good port. And, and those, it's, and, and it's a uh, yeah, and, it, and they use the same engine, so I really have no idea what happened this time. Also, Monster Hunter, uh, I think, uh, used the DLSS. As well, right? But uh, yeah, for this one, they went with the AMD. FSR is not that good. <laughs> but yeah. uh, you're just prejudiced yeah, I... against the Reds. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, at least FSR can be used by everyone. Yeah. And that's... the LSS can be used by very few people. Those lucky ones that have RTXs. As so lucky as very... you. We have a yeah. few. Yeah, all the all those yeah. all those weird people who go to the dark side. Yeah. <laughs> those people in line with Bobby Kotick and supporters of him. We have cookies. <laughs> I have oh, but, uh, <laughs> Seriously, no, I agree. It's uh it's a great game and uh yeah, we'll see what, what comes next. Uh from Capcom, but uh the thing is, uh, you know, interestingly, uh, even even with the Resident Evil Village uh, doing very well um, sales-wise, it's clear that uh, Monster Hunter is now the biggest IP for Capcom. Oh yeah. Uh, so even after uh, Monster Hunter World, even Rise is uh, selling very well, and uh, yeah, it's interesting because I think. Uh, only you know before of Monster Hunter World, it wasn't the biggest IP. Uh, it was large in uh, you know Asia and Japan especially, but it wasn't that big uh, here in. Uh, well, they they allowed it to yeah. westernize slightly, and it just yeah. Yeah. brought in the mechanics that expanded it. I, then again, I say westernized it slightly. It follows a natural progression for the series. I think it's more that it never really got that sort of look in people never really looked at it that much over here in the west now whether that's just because of the they didn't advertise it properly or chances are in reality the pandemic helped them like it's helped quite a few games where people 
are inside, so they want more games to play. People try yeah, and want and then they're just like, great game. You know, about Monster Hunter, I think the main issue was that a lot of entries were released on PSP. Yeah. Like there were, I, I, I think the first few ones were on PlayStation 2. I don't really remember, but I remember that a lot of them were on PSP. So that was pretty much. I think the first, the first home console release after the first couple of ones was on the Wii U with Monster Hunter 3. There you go. And we know, anything we know, we... yeah. And then yeah, we know anything on Wii U doesn't really go. It was on portable consoles, and I think releasing it, or, and, and it was pretty much exclusive. Because they were really, the Monster Hunter 3 was released only on Nintendo consoles, so releasing it on everything except Nintendo consoles paid off with Monster Hunter World. Yeah, it gives you more yeah. options. Yeah, it, it was probably yeah, it was probably more a more of a matter of reaching more people by releasing it on more on more consoles. And it allows you to make the game better with using more technology to yeah yeah as well uh, yeah. That's um, and also yeah. Inter- yeah. Just interestingly, there's also a new mod uh, for uh, Resident Evil engine games that uh, makes them all VR compatible, right? I think. Uh, yeah. oh, I thought they... you were going to mention new mods. Then I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And, no, uh, no, VR compatibility is good. It it depends. I say it's good. It's not always good. It depends on yeah, the it depends game. On it needs the to game. be made for it. Yeah, I saw some. I saw some footage of Resident Evil Two Remake in VR, and it looked like it was an official port. It really worked well. As you said, it depends on the game. If you they, then somebody else tried it with the Monster Hunter Rise demo, and obviously it was not really playable. It's a third-person game. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, I think for first-person games, it's, it it can do well. I still have to see someone try with Devil May Cry Five. <laughs> but then again, I can I, see I can see where Leslie is going with this. Oh God, I can't imagine with Devil May Cry. No, Devil May Cry Five in VR. Oh shit, Jesus wept. How the hell are you going to control anything when you're trying to juggle people up in the air? Yeah, like this. That's yeah. That, that's <laughs> that, that's good. To be fair. No one tried that yet. Just be that waving mod, your yes. arms around like you're trying to waft away a horde of. Bees. You know, we just gave, we just gave Capcom an an, an idea. If yeah. you can get it to work, we just gave them an idea. But well, after all, they did just uh, release Resident Evil Four VR on the Oculus Quest Two, and uh, it was uh, quite well received, I think. Yeah, and also, that's Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah. Go so on. I know what 4. you're wanting to do. You're wanting to talk about San Andreas. Yeah, because Oculus is doing it again. It's uh, they're uh, announcing another all-time classic after Resident Evil Four, and this time it's uh, GTA San Andreas, which is of course uh, coming again soon in a couple of weeks uh, as part of the GTA trilogy definitive edition. But uh, this one will be a separate uh, VR version designed for the Oculus Quest Two and. Uh, we don't know much about it, but we do know that it's been years in the making, or so they've said. So maybe it will be out soon, uh, like next year, uh, eventually. And uh, yeah, like you said, GTA San Andreas, of course, is a third-person game uh, because uh, all GTA games were until GTA V introduced uh, first-person eventually. Yeah, uh, with, it's a weird one because I think. I used to play like first person modern GTA 3 way back when as well. So I think it's one of those games where it is it can be made first person easier than the jumpy flashy devil may cry stuff, but yeah. Yeah, of course it's not nearly as fast paced as uh, as Devil May Cry, but uh, you know, you do have to account for all of the driving sections as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, but it, it will be interesting because, of course, the world is huge. So it will be nice to explore it in VR. And, I'm just thinking uh, now, actually, how the hell is the jetpack going to work in VR? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Uh, we'll, yeah see. we'll see. But, 
I think it's going, it's going to be a uh, unlike Resident Evil 4, which was pretty much ready to be made in VR. I think they're going to make a lot more. They need a lot more work to make yeah. this one work. One a lot itself. more. I was, yeah, no, I was just thinking about how it would play in VR, and yeah, you know, as long as you walk around the city, around the cities, it's going to be fine. But driving and everything else, combat, and I think it's going to. It's be a weird good. one. Driving's not too bad because you've got driving VR games already, haven't you? Yeah, true. Um, combat again, it, it's a bit awkward. It depends how they do it because again, we've already got first-person shooters in VR. Mm. It's the moving and the combat that's. Yeah, it's going to be awkward. Yeah. And then switch. Are you going to swim? Yeah, swimming, for example. <laughs> it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, swimming as well. Going... And I was thinking swapping between the millions of weapons you get with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's going... it, will need, it will need a lot more work than Resident Evil 4 to be. Oh, hell yeah. Come to play. Yeah. Yeah. A lot I'm... More. I'm also betting that uh, it will be Oculus funding all of this uh, new development. Uh, I, I think you'll find that it's called Mater now. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that, Fucking th- that thing that was Facebook. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's interesting that uh, they are still investing uh, on VR and obviously with the Metaverse thing, uh, I think they will try to do even more. You know, they're promising that we will get uh, messenger calls in VR. <laughs> Although I'm not sure why anyone would, would want to wear yeah. a VR device while uh, working, while, uh, while, <laughs> while the chatting. Thing, the only thing I can think of it is like, because I did, it was last year, I believe, HTC, who make Vive, they've got a whole suite of applications for for working using a VR headset, having meetings, um, bringing in like graphical drawings so you can just show everything to people properly. But it also works on a flat screen as well. So it sounds like face- Meta, Facebook, Meta or Meta, um, it sounds like Facebook are just trying to copy what HTC are already doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. But it's interesting that uh, that rocks rockstar is kind of doing all of these side projects you know now they are doing uh, the definitive edition remaster they are doing san andreas vr they are doing gta 5 next generation all of these things while <laughs> while everyone is really waiting for gta 6 I you know? the question is are rockstar actually doing these are they, are they doing them internally, or is it just like they're farming it out? Yeah, uh, there are no details on that yet. We don't know, yeah. I, I imagine they'll be farming it out, honestly. Probably, but well, yeah. they would want well, to overstay it, at least. Yeah. Well, you know, about the trilogy remaster, it's not like it's uh, they made so many big changes that it needed so much time. So. Yeah. They could have done that internally as well. And it's not like two K. It's not like two K. Haven't got a shitload of studios laying around. Yeah, but can do it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I, I'm still saying we're probably going to get GTA six. Six. Yeah, GTA six. six will be talked about next year, and if not talked about, it may even get released next year. Yeah, I don't know. Ne- yeah. Release, I doubt it. But uh, yeah. Announced, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, well, it so like get announced. announces, yeah, and they announce and then release like six months later. So it's I say, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it got announced, at, you know, April, May time next year or E3 next year and then released around November, November time. Just, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Either that or it'll get announced late next year and released sometime 2020. Yeah, as, as long as they don't make it for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, please. <laughs> Only next <laughs> gen. Well, Cyberpunk did so well when it tried that. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why you would why would you say such a thing? Yeah. I'm disappointed, Alessio. <laughs> okay. Uh allow me to disappoint you more with uh, uh let's say uh Assassin's Creed. 
Do you like the topic? <laughs> uh, well, let's go on. I think there are a couple of uh... ranting coming. What was nice. that? <laughs> Chris the Bear. I'm not even going to rant. It's just. It's, it's Ubisoft, <laughs> another company that can't help but molest people. Oh, that's not, yeah. that's not putting it harsh enough. Another company that can't help but cover up rapes, literal. <laughs> and yeah. when it comes to Assassin's Creed, I've I've enjoyed Assassin's Creed in the past. I've also hated Assassin's Creed in the past. It's sort of just gone started good, good with brother, you know, n- number two, and then it got shit. Like Assassin's Creed Two, wasn't that the one that had Assassin's Creed Two Brotherhood Revelations, Assassin's Creed yeah. Two Ghost Hollywood, Assassin's Creed Two Cooking Mama? Yeah, fucking about yeah. five thousand bloody yeah. five thousand Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I think it was three, two Brotherhood and Revelations. Yeah, Revelations. But then by the time I'd played Brotherhood and uh, it's like I, I tried Revelations, I'm like, this is just the same shit now. It's boring now. So I skipped to Assassin's Creed 3, and I think it, it was it 4 that was Black Flag. I came back for that because that was. 4, boring. yeah. Black Flag is the fourth one, yeah. And was then one. they tricked me into getting Unity, and that was absolute dog shit. And there, uh, God. It's just why the series is just too pumped out. Just give it breaks. And they have been giving it breaks when it came to Origins and then Assassin's Creed, Norse mythology. Mm. Uh, so now we've got Assassin's Creed Infinity. Have they run out of good titles now? Have they run out of good names? Infinity. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's probably a placeholder, though. I think they said it won't be free to play, right, Francesco? That, that's, yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, be, yeah. I think they had to come out and say that because the rumors say that it's going to be a pretty much a live service game, even more than. Uh, Valhalla. Well, they're all live service games now, aren't they? Yeah, but with Valhalla, they take it to the next step. At least I don't remember Odyssey being this much live service. Well, so you they know they're going to do the same thing where they make it so grinding takes absolutely donkeys, so you spend another yeah. 20 quid on... <laughs> you know, at least you know, at least with Valhalla, you didn't have to pay for anything if you just... There was no level gating, that kind of stuff that was in the previous games. So it's really, it was just cosmetics if you just want to. Yeah. Them. You know, it's, yeah. it's it's like that. You can you can easily ignore that. But if you say that a game is going to have all characters, multiple time periods, live service, then people are going to think it's going to be free to play. Yeah. But I they think... just have to come out and say that. The concern for me is when they, then they, they have to then add, it will be very innovative. Yeah, well, I'm don't, sorry, Ubisoft. I don't think so. You've not been innovative so. in about two decades. Yeah, well, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is basically The Witcher Three in I, England. I I don't actually know when Ubisoft were last innovative. I'm I'm genuinely struggling to think now. Possibly when they released Playboy the Mansion. Mm. Well, you no. know the the Mario tactical game was. Innovative, let's say the Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. That was yeah, okay. Well. You know, it was kind of yeah, it was kind of unexpected. But now yeah. they're now they're starting pumping out sequels. So goodbye innovation, because the second one is coming next year. So goodbye innovation. But to be fair, I don't. I think it's a buzzword now, innovative, because you don't need to innovate if you've got a good thing. Just tweak it and make it better, rather than doing the same shit over and over again. Sometimes innovations don't aren't good. Yeah, innovative yeah. means it's different. It doesn't mean it's good. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's for sure. And uh, but I, I uh, suppose your favorite game, New World, that's technically innovative in the fact that it's currently got a currency crisis going on, which every MMO has. But instead of <laughs> inflation, it's deflation, which, to be fair, I really like. I, <laughs> I do. It's different. And I'm not saying it's good because it like every MMO, it's screwing up people who are playing it, but that's just half of the course in an MMO. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, back to Assassin's Creed, uh, uh, Ubisoft also had the earnings reports this week and 
Apparently, Rivalala is doing very well for them. It's uh, now the second largest profit generating game to date in the company. So, yeah, it's doing very well. I, I guess they will continue to use it as a basis for Infinity, possibly. Mm. And uh, also, Far Cry 6 apparently has higher player, uh, you know, playtime like 25 percent higher than far cry 5 so there is that but uh, they have also you know uh, delayed again prince of persia remake and uh, the division Heartland. and so these are all coming between april next april and uh, march 2020 was beyond good and evil to mention uh, no, I'm afraid not. don't laugh it at doesn't e- it doesn't exist it doesn't exist <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. How many years has it been since they announced it? About oh, 40. Like 40 years. It was a long time ago. I would say it's yeah. more than four years. I'm, I, I'm sure it's yeah, more yeah. than four years. At least 10. Well, no, it doesn't funny. exist. And it doesn't exist then. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, next year. Actually, they said that next year should be the year that. Uh, uh, Skull and Bones releases. I was going to ask about good. that. Yeah, bla- Blazing Sales or fucking whatever it's called. Yeah. Not really sure, but... Uh, I yeah. don't... Th- and that's been in development hell for a while now. Yeah, they, they've uh, retooled it, uh, changed it uh, a number of times, oh. but uh, I don't know. Always a good sign. Always a good sign. <laughs> I don't know. I do am hopeful for uh, the new Avatar game that uh, Massive is is doing. Yeah, uh, I think that one may be good. We'll see. Oh well, yeah, um, you never know. It's possible. Possible. Yeah. Um, Say possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now for the weekly acquisition news. Crafton. Uh, that is to say, the owners of PUBG yeah. have acquired the Unknown Worlds, which is the developer of uh, Subnautica. So, how I do you feel about that? I just don't know how they're going to make Sub. I suppose they can make Subnautica something sub- battle royale. It's possible. <laughs> Subnautica. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, underwater <laughs> battle royale. I was saying, I, it's possible. I'm sure. I'm sure that's what they're thinking. I don't know. It's just, it's another acquisition. Um, I really don't know much about Crafton if they're hands off or hands on. Obviously, Subnautica does well. It's done well enough. So maybe, maybe they'll not do much with it. Um, maybe I'm hoping against on hope, but I don't know. It, I, yeah, no. Actually, it's something that uh, maybe they will ask him. Will, they will ask them to do something like Subnautica, but uh, you know, in a PUBG setting, like a single-player survival game set in PUBG. Who knows? In the you know, in the world of PUBG, it's a p- p- possibly. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I, you know, I've not thought about that. I, like you say, I thought about Subnautica Battle Royale. <laughs> Well, I can imagine yeah, that's, them trying to do. That's my. That's very likely, I suppose. Underwater yeah. battle royale. Well, it is possible that they could expand PUBG to include mm. water aspects, underwater aspects, so and get Subnautica to work the you know unknown worlds to work on that mm-hmm. as a support studio. Yeah. I'm hoping not, but yeah, I know the news said they're going to be just work as an independent game studio. So maybe it's just literally a case of this studio's made profit. Let's buy them and take some of the profit for ourselves. Yeah. Um, it's But uh, clearly more independent uh, developers are trying to you know, be financially secure for the foreseeable future. That's they why they take it here. So, they need to yeah. know, yeah, definitely. So... Yeah, and uh, lastly, I'd say for today, we have news that uh, 
Amy Hennig and uh, Skydance, uh, which she is leading, is now doing a Marvel game. Uh, narratively driven, of course. So likely a- action adventure, possibly Uncharted like. I'm just thinking, um, which Marvel hero suits an yeah. Uncharted theme? The Punisher? I like oh, that. I would love that. I would. Actually, I'm the... I would love that. <laughs> you know, I, so would I. Come on, Amy, get a punish again, mid. Yeah, that's that or that or their devil. I I'd like their devil too, but yeah. uh, which yeah. was being neglected as well. But uh, in, you know, in games at least. But yeah, I think uh, Marvel is, you know, they are doing nicely at least now with uh, with the games. Uh, you know, Guardians doing well and uh, also. They've got Spider-Man 3 on the horizon. They have announced Wolverine, which is also going to be developed by Insomniac. And then this other this other game, we'll see what's what what it's about. I but mean, granted, uh, it's only the start, so we're not going to see whatever it is for at least another four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They haven't it's even a... got a studio left. And where are they getting the funding from? Mm. Uh, I'm going to take I don't know. As long as it's not Activision, I mean it's uh, Marvel could you know they technically they they have the money to to fund it themselves if they, they want they, to. They do. I know it's Disney, it's Marvel, so they do have it. But I just don't think they're going to make their own. I, well, I suppose they could go get into publishing. I don't know. It's a, I, I don't know. It seems like a big game to start off with the publishing thing. Usually, you start off with smaller titles first. Yeah, Rather that's... than going full blast. Like even Amazon started with that um really average at best driving game. <laughs> yeah, Grand Tour. That's the one, Jeremy Clarkton. And but you yeah, review it. I did. I think I did. It wasn't good. Okay, so what what did you guys play? This I, week. I will be able to talk about well, two things. I was playing Fatal the Project Zero slash Fatal Frame re release. Uh but that's up. I've put that up now Sunday. And you also Microsoft also sent us an early copy of Forza Horizon, which I am playing as well. I like in likey likey. <laughs> Is it good? I'm not saying too much because I can't remember what time I'm putting this out. Ah, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. And, yeah. Uh, How about you two? Yeah, I, I, I have been playing Shin Megami Tensei 5, but I can't talk about it too much because the when... review will not be up before uh, the podcast does. Um... I can't tell you exactly when, but it's not going to be on the same day as the podcast. So, I, so none I of us can play... speak about what we're playing. Yeah, Apart from I can't. Uh... We're playing New World. <laughs> so I just I play I just played this one this week. So I pretty empty week for me. I can't talk about anything about this. So, uh, no, yeah, cool for this week. No. I uh, said no Yakuza this week for Francesco. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. I just I, I like I played it like last night, uh, a couple hours. But yeah, I just fo- uh, yeah, I was just focused on uh, on the on the other one. Hmm. So uh, yeah, pretty empty week this time. How about um, you, Alessio, other than Guardians and New World? Anything other than that? Uh, no, but uh, I can tell you that finally we have uh, we have got. The chance to transfer our characters on in your new world, and uh, finally we've uh, managed to uh, scramble the guild back together, as we were all separate, you know, in various servers. <laughs> finally, we are playing together, which is uh, like you know, kind of a month later than <laughs> than the game's release, and obviously this has had some issues uh, on the. On the guild itself, because uh, of course, uh, playing together is like the primary purpose of any any yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. 
so of course uh, a few people already uh, kind of got tired of playing alone and maybe they quit uh, at least for now so yeah it's taken its toll and uh, also of course there are uh, quite a few bugs and issues that are still still in the game uh, even the you know uh, performance during wars uh, during like large scale pvp uh, it's something uh, guilds are complaining about uh, and that's kind of uh, a bit surprising to me because it's uh, basically the the first thing they have been testing since uh, well at least a couple of years now, right? Mm-hmm. You, I think you tested sieges when you I first. I did. Played. I did when I previewed it with oh God before the pandemic. Yeah, it was a, ca- a couple of years ago almost. So it's uh, it's kind of weird that uh, they haven't solved that yet and. Uh, but yeah, like you said, of course, uh, uh, the the game just launched. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of work as as it is with all uh, MMOs to improve it. Uh, now we'll have to see. Now, of course, they have been uh, fixing the most important bugs and stuff like that. So uh, we haven't we haven't heard yet about their content plans and. Uh, uh, hopefully we will soon and we'll see the roadmap and uh, how they're going to plan for the future of the game. Uh, of course, there is a lot of people that bought the game and uh, they've had their fun with them, but uh, these games are only really as good as as the post-launch support. Yeah. So it's uh, it's something we'll have to, we'll have to see. Uh, personally, I'm finally almost... <laughs> Almost at uh, max level, uh, so hopefully I'll be able to finish the review soon, and uh, and then I'll see what. Uh, you know. I have an idea uh, of the score yet, but uh, we'll see. Fair enough. No, that's at least they're improving it, but yeah, but yeah, just. We'll see what time brings. It's an MMO. It takes time for things to grow. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think uh, that's everything from me. I'm going to go back to playing the race again. Hey. Don't expect... (laughs) Uh, I said, yeah, I'm going to play something myself, but not racing. (laughs) Not the same racing. Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) He doesn't like to race. He wants to take it slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, prefer, yeah. I prefer to race in real life. Not much into driving games. I prefer driving real cars. Yeah, so do I. But well, so do I. But Forza Horizon's always is just a good gear series. Better than the regular Forza shite. All right. That's me. Well, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no. Thank you all for joining us, and uh, we will see you all another time. Probably to rant about Bobby Kotick. <laughs> or someone else. Yeah, or someone else. See you all in a bit. Bye. Bye.